Praise God, praise God, you lovely people on this beautiful Thursday. I'm going to call this Loving Thursday. Love on somebody today. You know you haven't told your husband in a long time. Look over there while he's in there sleeping. Tell him, say, honey, I love you. See, he's going to say, baby, why you wake me up? I just want to tell you how much I love you. And I know when it seemed like we was going to make it the first three or four years. We've been married six years now. But look, I tell you, you have been taking care of me and the children. I thank you, honey. And kiss him on his forehead. Mwah. When the last time have you told your beautiful wife? Wes walked up behind her while she was in the kitchen cooking. Pattered like you know you patter. My God, and said, baby, I just wanted to tell you something. What's wrong? I'm serious, baby. Did you cheat on me? That's the first thing a woman going to say when you get real serious with them. They're going to want to know why you're so serious. You must have did something wrong because you don't do it often. But when you make a pattern of loving, then they don't be suspicious like that. Love unconditional on an odd Tuesday in October. It don't have to be your birthday. It don't have to be a wedding. It don't have to be a, a, a celebration. It don't have to be nothing going on. It don't have to be no birthday. It don't have to be nothing. Just me coming up to you and telling you how I appreciate you. And that don't just go for relationship. That goes with friends and family members and cousins and coworkers. Always having something out of your mouth to say to someone else a positive note instead of negative, if that make any sense. Well, we're going to have a good time today. That was just a little appetizer. First, we want to give honor to the Lord, which over our life, over my life, over you, 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 and over everybody's life that's under the sound of my voice. That's God himself. He is the king. He is the master. And if you don't get that embedded in your house, in Matthew chapter 18, we'll be visiting down through there. We're going to just eat so much meat and potatoes in, in Matthew chapter 18. My God, it talks, it starts off talking about the disciples, asking who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And God went to tell him, Jesus Christ went to tell him that if, if, until you be confirmed or conformed over as a child, with the, and one thing about a child, what he's talking about in this verse, one thing about a two-year-old, you could take it anywhere you want to. Just pick it up and take it anywhere. It's so humble. It'll believe everything you say. Come on. If you get them four or five, six years old, you could tell them, look at that. That'll grow up to a big old tree. Will it grow up to a big old tree? Sure it will. Yes, it will. But who is your superhero, uh, Grandma? My, my superhero is Jesus. Who is Jesus? He walked the water. Does he can walk on water? See, you can you can influence them to go to some Jesus. I wish I had a church to talk back to me. And that's what he's talking about in Matthew chapter 18. He's talking about them forsake not the little children to come to him. He said, if you keep your children that won't believe in me, if you start getting the seed into them, and then you sitting there on Sunday not going to church, not putting them in uh, uh, wood, uh, believing people, when you don't do that as a parent, when you don't do that as a dog, then he said it's like a millstone. See, a millstone is a big block that they had to lock it on your neck, a big old piece of concrete. They will lock it on your neck and chain your hands behind you and throw you in the water. Now, how are you going to swim? You tied up with your hands behind you, got a big block on you. He, he said that is just like you not taking your children to church. I'm talking to you because a lot of people go to church and leave your children at home. That is not good. That is like giving them a gun, putting one bullet in and spinning the chamber and saying, you know what? Click it. Come on. When people don't have nothing, when children don't have nothing to fall back on, when life gets to, to them like it got to us as adults, if you don't have nothing to call out as far as Jesus Christ, God himself, you could be lost real easy. Matthew's chapter 18 is telling you about how you must be just like a child. One thing about a little child, you could take it and say anything to it. It's just believe it, be looking up you. Is that true? Yeah, that bridge come open like that. And, and, and if you don't be, if you don't get under there, uh, get off and under there, it'll fall back on. It'll fall on you. Yeah, but if you have Jesus Christ, your superhero, yeah. See, when you start training your babies like that, you plant the seed in there. Come on. Yes, they're going to do like we all done. You remember we had to go to church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and all day Sunday. Remember with them testimonies we have? But that seed was planted in us. Now we know what we should do, right or wrong, if that makes sense, on this loving Thursday. Are you going to love on somebody today? 
it's time to love on a stranger. Walk up to a stranger. If you get in there, this and where you can almost touch, somebody should be speaking. If you get that close where you can almost touch a person and you walk right past a person and you don't say nothing, it's something wrong. Hey, good. How are you doing this morning? God bless you. I like that scar. You know, anything you could do to show yourself friendly. My God, because when you show yourself friendly, you know what? Friendly come back. When you show yourself love, you know what come back? Love come back. But when you show that attitude, when you show all the craziness that you got in your thought instead of positive, all that negative stuff come back and it start weighing you down. And you get meaner and more bitter, if that make any sense. Let's see if we can go into a little bit. I want to read this story because this story is just like us. And we got to understand in this day and time, the, the biggest crime is sex and money. That's what's killing us right now, sex and money. A lot of these shootings is uh, have a lot to do with domestic. People is talking about people. Facebook, you got to be careful. Seeing stuff on Facebook. Well, I, well, you know my name. You know where I'm at. You can't be doing that. Some people will find you. And you have to understand that every, every shooting is not drug related. Sometimes it's relationship related. Come on. Come on, little drug dealers that fell in love with some little girl and, and now another little drug dealer is over there and now they got a beef going on. But when you boil down, when you see as I didn't really find the truth, it was over some woman or some man. Come on, a lot of stuff is going on. In this particular text, I like it uh, because it's in Matthew's chapter 23 through, 23 through 36. You can find it in there and I advise you to read it for yourself. Uh, but it's, it's the king had a, a servant that owed him a thousand dollars. And the king, when he, when he pleaded, let me just read it in your hearing. Now watch, is, isn't this just like a, let me put these on. Okay. Matthew's chapter 18, let's go 23 through 35. I won't read all of it, but this is in there. You can read. Uh, just read all of Matthew's chapter 18 just to be safe and get all the word. It said, the kingdom of God is like a king who decided to square account with his servant. As he got underway, one servant was brought before him who had ran up a debt of a hundred thousand dollars. Wow, a hundred, write that down, a hundred thousand dollars. He could not pay up, so the king ordered the man along with his wife, his children, and his goods to be auctioned off at the slave market. The poor man, the, the poor ratchet, the poor ratchet threw himself at the king's feet. My God, begging him. Give me a chance and I will pay it all back. Touched by his plea, the king, watch this, he touched his heart. The king had pity for him. The touch, touched by his plea, the king let him off, easy, easing the debt. The servant was no sooner out of the room. Watch this. Soon as somebody forgave you for what you done, my God, you go immediately and don't forgive nobody else. As long as you can forgive, you're, you're cool. As long as everybody forgiving you. But when it's time for you to forgive people, come on, then you can't do it. He said, the servant, as soon, the servant was no sooner out of the room when he came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him $10. My God, killing people for a little nothing. $10. He seized him by the throat, choking him, and demanded pay up now, you poor ratchet, and threw himself down and begged and begged. Give me a chance, he said. I'll pay it all back, but he would not do it. He kept on choking him. He had him arrested and put into jail until the debt was paid. Now watch, whatever man soweth shall he reap. Now watch this. De debt was paid. 
And when the other servants saw this going on, they were enraged or outraged and brought, brought a detailed report to the king. And the king summoned the man and said, you evil servant, evil people won't forgive, but you want people to forgive you. You evil servant, I forgave you entire debt when you begged me for mercy. Should not you been compelled to be merciful to your fellow servant who asked for mercy? The king was furious and put the screws to the man until he paid back his entire debt. And that, ex excuse me, and that especially what my father in heaven is going to do to each one of you. Mm, that's what my father in heaven is going to do to each one of you who do not forgive unconditionally anyone who asks for mercy. My God. Woo. That reading, I tell you. See, you have to understand with life, there's all kinds of things. Reading is one that I never liked. I think I was afraid of it coming up in school because... I, I stopped reading. I should have kept reading. And then I even made jokes when my mama asked me one time, this is what you, you got to be careful what you say out of your mom. My mom asked me, she said, Junior, why are you getting so many D's? Days and Donnie's grades is a lot better. What's going on? I just gave up. Come on. I had sex too young, 11 years old, had sex. And, and I blew my mind all, all the way dealing with some young girl, 15, that had a baby already. Come on, jack my life up. So I stopped school. I didn't want no school no more. Come on, the trick of the enemy had to hold me. So I made a comment when my mama said, why you got so many Ds? I said, because my last name is Diggins. But you have to be careful because things will come back to hunt you. Never knew that I would be on here and have to read and have to read the Bible. And it's one of the hardest things in the, in the world to read. But this text is so good. I'm just giving you my testimony. The, the text is so good because people, you have to forgive people because people have forgave you. And if you don't forgive, this going to do just like God said. He's going to put you in penalty for what you uh done if you don't forgive. So the key of God forgiving you is forgive other people. Love on other people on this loving Thursday. Well, I apologize. I didn't mean to go in there so deep, but I had to go down in there. And sometimes you have to go down in the well to go get the water because it's just so deep, if that make any sense. I love you all. Be a blessing today to each other. Find a stranger and say hi to some. Let's make this uh, a high day. You speak to everybody that you come in touching distance. And no matter what color they are, just speak to them. Show friendly so you can get friendly back, if that make any sense, on this loving Thursday. Love on your children. Love on your husband. Love on your wife. Love on your siblings, love on your co-workers, love on your friend, and also love on your enemy. Because that's where the power comes. Not loving on people that you know you should love. That don't get no points. You love on people that you know that betrayed you. God said, look at my baby. I can't wait to bless them. You guys have a beautiful day. Have a beautiful weekend. If I don't hear from you uh, tomorrow, tomorrow is Friday. I was thinking today was Friday. But I'll see you tomorrow. Talk to you tomorrow. If not, have a beautiful weekend. And you guys be blessed. Be careful.